Hey everyone. So in this video, we'll uh, go through how to create lots uh, within Robin Solutions lot batch expiry tracking um, in the system, how to create them, how to then assign them to products, um, and then how to receive product with lots, how to um, ship product with lots, and um, go through a manufacturing order with lots. Um, and then also just checking out the batch and expiry tracking report. Okay, so let's first start off by um, going to the settings and then creating our lot. Um, I know lots, I know some businesses call it lot, some businesses call it batch. Um, so I already have it created in the system here. Okay, and, and um, the tracking field type that I've used is text and exp expiration date. So basically, um, so if you're first setting up Robin Solutions, first thing you need to do is you can call it lot, batch, whatever you're naming, uh, whatever you want to call it, and then just make sure you select the, um, the type as text. Okay, so you can use numbers, um, you can use letters and such. Okay. Um, and then just click the checkbox, uh, make sure the status is checked on, is active, uh, click the checkbox to save it. And then uh, do the uh, expiry date and make sure you're selecting the tracking field as expiration date, okay? All right, um, so I already have these two uh, created here, so lot and expiry, which I will use when I'm creating my new product, okay? So the next thing is I'm going to create a product and I'm going to... Um, assign the, the the tracking, okay? So one thing to notice, which I'll go through, so let's actually create a uh, bag of cookies, All right? Here's the product, okay? I'm going to say that this product will have multiple variations. Again, for each of uh, the product, you can basically select a different uh, pricing. So for the product, you can uh, basically say, all right, uh, the retail is cookie, sell at $9.99, wholesale at maybe $7.99. You can set that up here. Here is the tracking information. Okay, so the first thing is our system allows you to attach both lot and expiry or just lot or just expiry. So I know a lot of systems you, you have, uh, once you turn on batch or lot tracking, it already comes with an expiry date. In our system, you just select. Um, you can actually do more than one tracking. Um, uh, you can do lot, expiry, and uh, maybe you wanna use the manufacturing date as a tracking uh, field as well. So you can actually go in and create a tracking field called manufacturing date and make sure that the type is set up as um, not expiration, but rather just date field, okay? So for, so for this product, I'm gonna use lot, and expiry, uh, I'm gonna come down here, create the different variations of the size. So here I'm gonna call it a large bag, um, small bag, medium bag. All right, so I have three different variations here. Um, so let's just go with 8.99, sorry, 7.99 is a small bag. Go with 899 here. Seven five. And let's go with six here. Okay. So I am now going to save the product. So now I have a bag of cookies and three different variations. Okay. So as you can see here, there's no inventory. All right. So now let's uh, let's go through and create a uh, purchase order and receive the inventory in uh, with the lots. And also um, we can look at it on the sales side, shipping these particular products out. How do you select lots? So let's go on to purchase order. Uh, let me see what kind of vendors I have. Um, okay, so I have a food supplier. So I'm going to use food supplier add, I'm going to add the bag of cookies. Bag of cookies small. And then bag of cookies medium. All right. So let's going to receive 10. Let's say 
20 of these, 15 of these. All right. It uh, looks like I didn't set up a unit price, so I'm going to set up a unit price of uh, 0.25. Okay, all right. So I'm going to now set the expected date. All right, place the order. Okay, so now let's let's go over to the receiving uh, tab. So if products have lot and expiry tracking or any kind of tracking information, when you're trying to receive it, there will be an icon called, uh, there will be this little icon here, okay? That basically tells you that you need to enter tracking for this product. Okay, so um, in order to enter tracking, you first need to make sure you enter quantity and location so that it knows exactly where, uh, what this lot is for, right? What amount of quantity and, and what location are you gonna put this uh, out there for? All right, so I'm gonna receive 10 and I'm gonna put this into storage location. Here, I'm going to enter a lot. So lot, uh, Um, so I can do, let's say, bag of cookies, LB, dash April 13th, um, and uh, dash one. All right, so that's going to be our lot. I'm going to copy this over. So I've just created a lot number. Okay, and then this will expire on the 30th. Press OK. And then we have this. Let's say you're trying to receive two lots for this. You can split the lots. So here I can do 10 storage. Do lot two. Expiration. Let's say it expires on the second. Press OK. I do lot 10 here. Storage. Two, okay, and then again, this one I'll just use a regular lot. This one I'll just use one lot instead of doing multiple. It's okay, receive. All right, so what I've done now is I've received these products with the appropriate lots and the expiry dates. Okay, so now what if I wanna see what my inventory is for these products and I wanna know what lots are available? Okay, so there's multiple ways. If I wanna look at the inventory numbers, I just go to view variant and let's say I type in bag of cookies. Okay, so here's my three different variations. You'll see where everything is. So if I click on a product, you'll see exactly where it is, what location. If I go into the product and go over to the inventory tab, you'll see the expiration date. Okay, and the lot number. But if a product has multiple lots, um, I believe it's the small, um, this screen is not gonna tell you where the lots are. It, it's basically going to just tell you, um, okay, the, these are the total lots and these are the total expiry dates. So if you wanna know the quantity uh, breakdown, just go over to reports and you go to batch and expiry report, okay? So this specifically is going to tell you uh, the lot numbers and the uh, and the breakdown. So as you can see here, there is bag of chips here. Um, so here it is, uh, the bag of cookies, large, medium. So let's actually go through and filter, right? So let's actually go bag uh, of cookies, large. Let's search by that. As you'll see bag of uh, cookies, large. I have this lot and this expiry date, stock 10 received. If you click on it, you can see the whole history of how this lot was created. This lot was created on PO uh, 454, and then this is the receipt that the order um, uh, that this lot was received on. And I've received quantity 10. Um, it was put to location storage, and then it was, uh, I bought this from the food supplier, okay? So if I now take cookies and I look at the small bag, which has multiple lots, you will see two different lines. So you'll see lot, I have, you know, I received 10 of this lot and then I received 10 of this. So if I go through the history, if I click that, it's gonna say, I received this on this PO, this receipt, right? Um, and it was put away to this location. And then if, if I look at this lot, it's gonna tell me the same exact thing. 
okay, that I received this quantity. All right, so now what happens if I were to create a sales order and ship uh, some of these products out? So let's go create a new sales order. Here's the product. So bag of cookies. Let's see large bag. Let's say I'm gonna ship three of these out. Small bag, and then let's go with the bag. Cookies, the medium. Four, let's go with five. We got all the pricing here already. Okay, I'm gonna ship this out by today. Place your order. Okay, so now order's been placed. Let's go over to the shipping tab and let's start the shipping process. Okay, so if a product is lot or batch tracker or any tracking, if it's tracked, right? Um, you need to, before you ship it out, you need to select the lots or you can have the system auto select it. If the system auto selects it, it will pick first in first out meaning whatever lot was created first will be the lot it's going to try to consume and then it picks the second lot. So it's in the first and first out process. So remember those uh, product for the small bag where we created two different lots. So technically those two lots were created almost at the same time. So whatever lot was essentially created first, so it's gonna be the first lot we entered first is going to be depleted first technically. but you have the ability to override it. So here, what I'm going to do is, I'm gonna manually do it. So I'm gonna select this, enter the location, and here it shows me all the available lots. You'll see that 10 is available, so I'm actually going to pick three, okay? And for this, I need to pick five. So again, I'll type in the location. Here I have two lots available, and I can split this up. So I could do two from the May 2nd expiry date, and then I could do three from here, press okay. And then for this one, this is only gonna have one lot. Select four, that here, pack the order, pack it. And if you have any tracking information, you can enter that here, um, whatever the tracking information may be, and then mark it as shipped, okay. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back and look at the lot tracking report again. So if I look at the lot tracking report and let me filter by the bag of cookies. Let's look at the large bag, run it. Let me clear out some of these columns that we don't need. So let me hide the skew as well, okay. So here you'll see that stock received was 10, available is seven. What this tells you is when this lot was first created, you received 10 of it, basically. And right now you only have seven available. So if I click this, you'll see the transactions against this lot, right? So you'll see that you purchased 10 on April 13th, and then you shipped three of this lot away from this location to this customer, okay? So as a result, you only have seven available of this lot, okay? Let's look at the other lot, uh, other product that has two different lots. Small bag, let's run it. So this product has two lots and you'll see that the first lot, only eight is available and then the second lot, only seven is available, right? So if I click on it, you'll see that I, I bought 10, I shipped out two. Again, transaction ID and the shipment exactly where to find it, okay? Um, click on this, same thing. You'll see I bought 10, but I shipped out three of this lot on this sales order and this shipment and to this customer. All right, so anytime you have any lot recalls, you can actually search multiple ways. You can actually pull up a specific order. So for example, you know who the, um, if you know the order, you can actually go and search the order and see the shipment transactions. If you know the lot, for example, which in this case is this lot, right? You can actually just type in this lot. So I can actually type in this lot number, run it, and I'll find, I'll, you know, I'll see where, um, I'll see the availability of this lot. And then you can click on it and see exactly where this lot uh, was sent to. Okay. So you can search by the lot. You can search by the expiry date range. Um, if a lot is fully depleted, 
uh, the tracking status becomes unavailable, what that just means is that the lot has basically been used up, right? So if I've shipped, uh, let's say I've shipped this lot out completely, uh, lot the May 5th lot, then this lot will expire. Basically, it's going to be completed. The availability would be zero. And as a result, this would be in the unavailable. So if I search unavailable, you'll see that there's no lots that are unavailable. Okay. So actually, let me just do a blind search. So if I do a blind search, you'll see that the lots that are um, unavailable are the ones with availability of zero. So if I look at this lot, so you can see this lot I bought uh, this is a bag of chips, mild. You'll see that I bought two, and then I shipped two to Brom, and as a result, this lot is fully depleted. Okay? Same thing. Um, this product was, um, this is a bulk chocolate bars. You'll see that this product was, um, was it, when it says assembly out, that means that it was a, uh, it was a product, it's a finished product from an assembly process. So it was the end product of an assembly or a production. So it came out of assembly and then it went into another assembly. So you see that it came out of assembly MO319, work order 337, and then it was uh, used on two different assemblies, MO320, MO321. Okay, as a result, it was depleted. All right, so you have complete batch tracking history. So anytime you wanna find a lot, um, anything. You can just come down here, search the lot, and then track and trace that lot completely end to end. Okay. If you guys have any questions, just feel free to um, contact us. Um, use this chat option on below. You read our support articles um, or just reach out to us in the chat or at support at brahmin-solutions.com. Okay.